So I really cannot stand Pete Buttigieg, and part of the reason is because he has been instrumental in driving down public support for policies that are incredibly important, like Medicare for All. Now, it's still very popular, don't get me wrong, but since he's entered the race and since he started to argue against Medicare for All, support for Medicare for All has been going down, and support for a public option is actually on the rise, and I think that's largely due to Pete Buttigieg. Now, when he entered this race, he supported Medicare for All, but all of a sudden, he started to take hundreds of thousands of dollars from the health insurance industry and big pharma and doing all of these fundraisers in the Hamptons with rich people, and now he doesn't support Medicare for All. In other words, he was never really serious about policy, and he just is running because he's a careerist. That's Pete Buttigieg in a nutshell. But now that he has successfully driven down support of Medicare for All to a degree by disingenuously arguing that it takes away choice if we want to remove the profit motive out of the healthcare system, well now he's setting his sights on another popular progressive policy proposal. So this is an ad that he released that I guess his team thought was um, a good idea and a good point to make about free college and why we can't have it. I believe we should move to make college affordable for everybody. There are some voices saying, well, that, that doesn't count unless you go even further, unless it's free even for, for the kids and millionaires. But I only want to make promises that we can keep. Look, what I'm proposing is, is plenty bold. I mean, these are big ideas. We can gather the, the majority to drive those big ideas through without turning off half the country before we even get into office. And that, I think, is the best governing strategy, as well as what it's going to take in order to win. And Lord knows we got to win. I'm Pete Buttigieg, and I approve this message. You're wrong. Okay, so the first red flag is he says that we should make colleges affordable for everyone. Whenever a centrist talks about affordability, um... I have to ask, what does that even mean? Because what we've learned from the Affordable Care Act is that affordability is incredibly subjective. What's affordable for one family is not affordable for another family. So when you say you want to make college affordable for Americans, I mean, that means nothing to me if you're not talking specific numbers. Now, all we get from people to judge are vague platitudes, general policy prescriptions, but no real solutions that would actually fundamentally change America or change people's lives. And it's because he doesn't actually care about Americans. He just cares about being the president because he loves power and influence and probably money. Now, on top of that, he implies that people like Bernie Sanders think that he doesn't go far enough because we need to go so far that we make college free even if it's free for the kids of millionaires. This is the exact same talking point that Hillary Clinton used in 2016 to justify her unwillingness to support free college because she said, I don't want to support free college because I don't want Trump's kids to benefit from that program. Well, what a moronic view of the world. It shows that you're not serious about policy because universal policies should benefit everyone because everyone pays into it. By that logic, we should not allow rich people to drive on public roads or not allow them to enjoy public parks or not allow them to call the fire department when their houses are on fire. That's idiotic. It's moronic. It's overly complicated. We don't have to means test policies just to make sure that we exclude millionaires and billionaires from participating. One, because millionaires, they're already going to send their kids to private Ivy League schools, right? Not very many of them are going to want to go to public colleges, but if they did, so what? You're saying that we should not have free college for everyone just to stop some millionaires from benefiting from it? If you truly were against millionaires benefiting from, you know, public policy, wouldn't you institute something like a wealth tax or increasing taxes on the rich? You don't support that, though. So this is nothing more than pseudo-adversarialism. He wants to make it seem as if he's actually the one who is going to be harder on the millionaire class, but that's not true. There's no point in really trying to dissect his policy prescriptions because he's not serious about anything. He just cares about his own career. It doesn't matter what the American people need. He is in this for himself. Now, he also gave us a little bit of insight into his electoral strategy and suggested that people who go too far, like Bernie Sanders, um, they would turn off half the country. Now, what this tells us about his strategy is he would try to court moderate Republicans and pivot in the general election 
And, you know, he's setting himself up now so the pivot doesn't seem too jarring, but this strategy is a proven loser. Hillary Clinton tried this, and Donald Trump is president. So, to him, winning this election isn't going to be about getting out young voters. It's not about registering new voters. This is about appealing to a fixed number of voters and just persuading enough moderate Republicans and independents. That's what he thinks that this is about. That's not going to be conducive to a victory, you moron. So people to judge, um, he's dangerous, he is destructive, and the problem with Pete Buttigieg is that he's young, so we're going to have to deal with him probably every four years, right? If he's not successful in 2020, he's probably going to run for the Senate and then run for president again, and the establishment loves him because he is the errand boy of elites, so they're going to constantly shove him down our throats, and the problem with Pete Buttigieg is that he's effective at promoting neoliberalism and centrism and corporatism, so, you know, we don't need that type of influence in the Democratic Party when we are pushing for a paradigm shift, right? But I don't really have to say anything else because Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez responded to this ad and she basically did a phenomenal job at dismantling his entire view of the world. She tweeted, this is a GOP talking point used to dismantle public systems and it's sad to see a Democratic candidate adopt it. Let's talk about why Republicans are wrong on this. Just like rich kids can attend public school, they should be able to attend tuition-free public college. Here's why. One, universal public systems are designed to benefit everybody. Everyone contributes and everyone enjoys. We don't ban the rich from public schools, firefighters, or libraries because they are public goods. Two, universal systems that benefit everyone are stronger because everyone's invested. Three, when you start carving people out and adding asterisks to who can benefit from goods that should be available to all, cracks in the system develop. Four, many children of the elite want to go to private, Ivy-esque schools anyway, which aren't covered by tuition-free public college. Five, lastly, and I can't believe we have to remind people of this, but it's good to have classrooms from pre-K through college to be socioeconomically integrated. Having students from different incomes and backgrounds in the same classroom is good for society and economic mobility. That is precisely it. She basically just took his entire worldview and crushed it. And the reason why Pete Buttigieg even has to make this type of argument, oh, well, Bernie wants rich kids to go to school for free, ho <laughs> ho, is because he's actually not going to hold elites accountable, right? Or if he does, it'll be what, a slap on the wrist? Do you honestly believe that there would be fundamental systemic change under a President Pete Buttigieg? Of course there wouldn't be. So he has to make it seem as if you know, Bernie isn't actually bold. Bernie isn't actually taking on elites because he wants to allow millionaire kids to go to school for free. That is nonsense. It's idiotic. And it should tell you everything you need to know about P. Buttigieg. He does not have a core. He's not driven by a political philosophy or ideology. His philosophy is power. He wants to make sure that he moves up he, you know, gets more power. He assumes positions that will be conducive to him getting more wealth. I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes a lobbyist or goes back to McKinsey after, you know, he runs for president. This is someone who doesn't actually care about the people. And the problem is that people to judge isn't alone. There's too many politicians, especially a lot of them who are running in 2020, who don't actually care about policies. They're running because they want to promote themselves. They want to set themselves up for a book deal or some other career. Bernie Sanders is the only person who is begrudgingly running because nobody else is willing to do what he wants to do. So, I absolutely cannot stand Pete Buttigieg. He is one of, if not the most dangerous people in the race. And anytime he argues against our goals that we've been fighting so hard to elevate, we need to call him out because this is dangerous, it's disingenuous, and I I'm just really sick of this talking point, this line of thinking to, you know, downplay progressive goals. Like, fuck off. If you don't support it, 
then be a Republican. Politically, Pete Buttigieg is a moderate Republican. So if you want to appeal to them so much, just run as a Republican already. Be a log cabin Republican. We all know that that's probably what you prefer. And, you know, join the other team who you're pandering to so much. Like, I'm so sick of these types of politicians. This is no longer the 1990s where you have to be a new Democrat and triangulate in order to get elected. Those days are done. If you want to win, you've got to bring out the left. You've got to bring out young voters. And Pete Buttigieg isn't going to do that. If he's the nominee, Trump gets a second term. Hear me now, quote me later, but I hope that we don't even have to deal with that. I hope that we don't have to witness Pete go up against Donald Trump. I don't think we will, but if we do, Trump is going to uh, absolutely destroy him because this is someone who is a weasel and people will see right through him and the Democratic Party base. They're just going to stay home. They're not going to support this elitist who isn't going to do anything for them. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.